Now that we got our Fox body started, let's set up our inputs and outputs. Using Terminator X software, we're pretty much going to automate our electric fan, our electric water pump, and our fuel pump controller. We'll also set up our transmission brake. We'll need the latest calibration from our Terminator X ECU to set up our IOs. Let's do that real quick. Simply turn the key on and grab your handheld display. From the home screen, click on File, Global Configs. Keep in mind that our most current calibration is in our Terminator X ECU and not the SD card. The calibration listed here is the first base calibration your wizard created. So if you've done any changes to the calibration, you want to download the current one. The latest and greatest calibration lives in the ECU. Click on the Download from ECU button. It'll save it to our SD card. Make sure to rename the file so we can easily find it later. Click on Save GCF As and rename the file. Then press OK. The download progress bar is storing our calibration in our SD card. Now we have two calibrations in our SD card. The initial one that we created when we ran the wizard for the first time and the current one. We can turn the key off and remove the SD card from our handheld. Insert the SD card into your laptop or computer. I'm using Windows 10, but everything I do should be pretty much standard fare on other versions of Windows. Let's find our SD card and load our calibration. Click on Open Global File, then click on Choose or Create a New Directory button. Our SD card should have a drive letter. Let's click it, then click the Holly folder, then the FW folder, and finally the Save GCF folder. In there we should have both our calibrations that we saved previously. The default one that was created when we initially ran the wizard and the latest one we just saved as 85 Stang. Double click it. It should load in our software. You should have the name of the file on top of the toolbar telling us this is the current working file. Our Terminator X only has four inputs and four outputs available by default. If you need more than that, you'll have to step up to the Dominator ECU which has almost an unlimited supply of IOs. For our Terminator X, we'll be using all four outputs and one input for our setup. Since my Fox body is strictly a race car, we're not going to use the basic IOs as configured with the Terminator X. Let's dive into the Terminator X software. So the first thing we'll do is add the IO config icon to our menu bar. Our IO config icon is not set up from a wizard calibration, so we'll add it within the Terminator X software. Let's set it up. Go to Toolbox, add individual config. This will open up a window with the folder individual configuration library showing its contents. Drive to the I.O. folder and double click. We'll select default.io file. What this does is add our I.O. button on the menu bar and gives us access to configure our devices. Let's go to the pin map button to check out how these devices are pinned out. If we view our inputs, we can see that one of our default I.O.s in here is the AC kick. We'll remove it to free up the available input. You do this by dragging it into the unassigned inputs box. Next, we'll go to the view outputs button. Here we can see more default outputs that we need to free up. We'll drag electric fan number 2, AC shutdown, and IAC PWM into the unassigned outputs area. We'll keep the electric fan number 1 as we can use that one for our fan. Essentially, we freed up inputs and outputs so we can add custom inputs and outputs. Let's go to the system ICF, basic I.O., and now we can uncheck these items off since we've unpinned them. Fan number 2, AC shutdown and IAC kick. Fan 1 will still be active, so we'll have to assign it to one of the correct outputs. Before you do all your wiring, it's important to make a detailed diagram listing where and how you wired your inputs and outputs to your relays. By having this wiring diagram, setting up the IOs is easily done. Let's go to the IO button and assign our inputs and outputs. We'll start with our inputs. We only have one, our trans brake input switch. We'll type the name and label it input to keep things organized. Click enable. Since our trans brake uses a switch, we can also use it to trigger our two-step rev limiter. To configure our two-step, let's go to our Spark ICF, click on rev limiters, and we'll enable our rev limiter number one, which is our two-step. By enabling it, we can assign it to our trans brake input switch. We'll set it a few hundred RPM before our converter stall speed about 3800 RPM. We'll finish up with our two-step once we get to our pin map configuration. Let's move on to outputs. For outputs, we'll add all of them except for output number one, our fan control. 
We'll use the system IOs for that one and all I have to do is pin it correctly in the pin map. Let's add our water pump, trans brake and our fuel pump control. Let's go ahead and enable all of them and then we can configure them one at a time. The configuration screen gives us the option of triggering our devices with switched or sensor input triggers or a combination of both. Without getting too overly complicated, a switched input trigger could be as simple as a physical switch like our trans brake button or even a pressure switch. Terminator X supports up to five different types of switched input triggers. For our water pump, we're not going to use any switched input triggers. We'll use the sensor input triggers. For sensor inputs, we can use any of the sensors that are hooked up to the Terminator X for control. In this case, we'll use two triggers. Click on two and then select all. So what this does is make sure that all the sensor input triggers need to be satisfied for the output to be enabled. For example, we'll set it to activate when the RPM is above 400 RPM. We don't want our water pump to turn on during cranking since that's when our biggest amperage draw is. For our second input trigger, we'll have it activate when the CTS or coolant temperature sensor is above 110 degrees. So for our water pump to turn on, the engine needs to be running and the coolant temperature needs to be above 110 degrees. As you can see, this can be very powerful and best of all, it's easy to program. Hit the back button and let's configure our trans brake. We have a switch that grounds out when enabled on our input one. We want it to activate the relay when we push the button. So we'll need to configure this as a switched input trigger. This output will activate when our trans brake button is triggered or grounded. We'll hit enabled. That's all we have to do here. Finally, our fuel pump controller. When our yellow wire is grounded, the pump runs at 50% duty cycle. When it's ungrounded, output goes to 100% duty cycle. We'll control this sensor input trigger with boost and TPS. So select two and all. When boost rises above one pound, the pump will unground and go to full buggy at 100%. We're also gonna set a secondary trigger with TPS. Whenever our TPS stays below 70%, we'll also have 50% duty cycle. When the TPS goes above 70%, we'll have 100% duty cycle. Obviously, there are a lot of ways to set these devices. We'll just go with the more logical choices, but as you can see, these I.O. configurations can be very powerful and automate everything. The last thing we'll do is make sure all our inputs and outputs are pinned correctly. Click the pin map button. The pin map allows us to configure our IOs to the correct wire or pin location. By clicking on this button, we can see that our trans brake input and our rev limiter number one are unassigned. One thing to note, you see the red letter next to our input. It's an abbreviation for the input output type. It will need to match one of the letters in the input type column. If there's not a matching letter, it will not allow us to drag it to that location. So always make sure the red letter is available in the input type column. We'll click and drag our trans brake to input number one since that's how we physically wired it. Since we want to activate our two step or rev limiter number one at the same time, we can pin it to our trans brake input or stack it. By doing so, this will turn on our two step and activate our trans brake output at the same time. Let's go to view output. Our electric fan will be using output one in the system IO. We'll drag our water pump and set it up as output two and our trans brake as output three, our fuel pump control as output four, just like our diagram. Now we can click done. Let's go to our system ICF, basic IOs and configure our fan output number one. I'll have it turn on at 180 degrees and off at 160. The last thing we need to confirm is that our IAC controller is set correctly. Click on idle settings. Since we're using an LS throttle body, we'll set it up as a stepper and select the GM LSX. Now all we need to do is save our file and load it to our Terminator X. With our calibration saved, all we gotta do now is upload our global configuration file to our Terminator X ECU. It now has a set of rules for our water pump, our electric fan, and our fuel pump controller. We also set up our transmission brake. Now, if you got a USB dongle, we can actually verify these connections. Let me show you how. Now, the first step we gotta do is upload our new calibration to our Terminator X ECU. Now, we can use our USB dongle to do that, but to keep in line with our video, we're gonna go ahead and use the handheld. First thing we wanna do is turn on our ignition key. We'll go to our homepage, we'll go to File, 
we're going to go global configs and we're going to upload our 85 stang to our ecu we'll hit upload we're going to hit ok we're going to hit ok and we'll cycle the ignition for at least four seconds all right now that we got our calibration uploaded to our terminator x ecu we're going to go ahead and connect our usb dongle to connect our dongle, we'll have to unplug our handheld display from the CAN bus connector. As soon as you plug in the USB connector, the USB link button on the Terminator X software should highlight. Go ahead and click on it. Once the calibration downloads to our software, the USB link button changes to online. We can now interact with our ECU in real time. We're going to use a data monitor to set up a data set where we can see our inputs and outputs in action. On the lower left hand corner is a data monitor. Click on the E button and the data monitor setup table pops up. If you scroll to the right past all the sensors, you'll see our inputs and outputs. A green check mark means it's assigned to a data set. Let's drag them to an empty block to create our data set. Drag the trans brake input, water pump, trans brake output, and fuel pump control to the empty block. Let's also grab our rev limiter number one so we can check it too. We'll rename the block Relays Input Output and click OK. The data monitor will now ask us if we want to save it. Click Yes. We now have a data set we can quickly access by scrolling on the arrow buttons on our data monitor. Find Relays Input Output. As you can see, our fuel pump control is active. We set our controller to be grounded for 50% duty cycle activation. Let's click on our I.O. button and configure the water pump. We're going to change a few parameters to trigger our water pump. This will basically confirm that we have wired our outputs correctly to our relay. Click on sensor input triggers. We're going to temporarily change it to 1. We'll change our trigger to coolant temperature sensor and we'll change the temperature to 30 degrees. Since we haven't started the car, our water is cold. 30 degrees should trigger the relay to turn on the pump. As soon as we hit enter, notice our data monitor. We get a green light confirmation and our pump turns on. Let's punch it to 180 to shut it off. Let's go ahead and put the water pump back to its original two triggers, RPM and CTS. Now let's try our trans brake. Our trans brake input is a switch while the output is a solenoid. All three lights are on the data monitor, including our rev limiter number one or two step. And there you have it. The USB dongle definitely comes in handy. It's a great tool to have in your toolbox. For more Terminator X tech tips, Go to holly.com.